In the last video, we installed WordPress the easy way. Now we're going to get into the manual or the harder way to install WordPress. Now, before we do the manual install, there's one thing we have to do first, and that's build our database. Now, don't be sweating it because it's really not that difficult. Actually, it's just about as easy as the easy install of the WordPress blog itself. But building a database is one of the integral parts of doing the manual installation because what we did with the easy install was it basically built itself, populated itself, you don't have to worry about all this stuff, but it, it basically took care of that for us. Now with the manual install, we gotta do this ourselves, you know, manual. One thing I wanna go over though before we get into the actual the creation of the uh, database, because it's really quite simple, I think I've got a couple extra minutes here I can spare. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at the, what they call the configuration file of our install here because if you recall I had you note the database name and username on your data sheet for future reference in case the old crapola hits the fan blades and you gotta reinstall everything well it did not give us a password so let me show you where you can go to find that because I kind of alluded to doing that in the last video but didn't do it so let's go ahead and open up our FTP client and in my case I'm going to be using Qt FTP you can do the same thing with FileZilla which is pretty popular out there and which is a free FTP client so anyway you got your FTP client you got it opened up you got logged in you're logged into your blog or your domain if you will and right here we are at the public HTML under public underscore HTML I'll get this out right and I'm just gonna double click on that to open it up and these are the guts to our blog this is what was installed for us uh, automatically and this is what we're going to be installing manually here in just a well in the next video um, spoiler alert it's gonna be easy so we scroll on down here and we're gonna looking we're looking for the WP dash config okay and in this particular FTP client that being cute FTP you're able to view and even edit these files on the fly as they say so otherwise with like FileZilla I don't think you're able to you have to actually download the file to your computer do the editing on your computer and then upload it and overwrite the file that's on your server but with this cool little software yeah you can do it all right here so let's go ahead and just take a look at this let me scroll up here so everything is in view and again it's a wp-config file right click on that come on down here to view and let's scroll on down here scrolling scrolling and right here this is telling us the DB name now, this is what we already got we got this from the I think the second or third step of the three steps in that auto install using Fantastico and that's this guy right here okay and that's the actually gave us a DB username but as you can see as I mentioned then both are the same. Whenever you do the auto install, they're both the same. And whenever you create your database manually, it doesn't have to be, it can be whatever you want, just as long as you record it, because you're gonna have to input this information manually into your database configuration whenever you do it the manual way. But we'll get into that here in a little bit. But what we did not get was we did not get the password. And these, by the way, are inside of these single quotes. Okay, so you want to make sure you leave those intact and you don't mess with those. You don't want to delete those or overwrite those or for that matter for this purpose you don't want to copy them either. Anyway, so you open up our data sheet here again and down here again we've got the database name and username and now we have a full set. We got the whole works there. Okay, so we're done there. Now then, I just want to point that out to you, a little bit of extra info on uh, how to get info on your database after the fact. So that being said, now then let's go ahead and delete all of this stuff. So we're going to start from scratch. We're going to use the same domain and basically do the same thing only manually this time, but we're going to start off by creating our database. So I'm going to delete this here before we get started on the next video. And this is uh, about to go bye-bye. And so what we want to do now to create our database is we want to log into our cPanel. And once logged in, we want to scroll on down pretty much the same area, unless of course you altered it like I did. But it's pretty much the same area as we had the Fantastico thingy, so it's kind of close to the bottom of the page. Again, unless you alter it and you customize it and you pull these guys up and around and all over the place. But right here is what we're looking for, databases. 
We're looking for MySQL, not MySQL, MySQL databases. One we're going to look at. Just left click on that. That'll open this up. So let's just go ahead and delete all this stuff here. And I'm going to use the same username and database name, but I'm not going to use the same password. I'm going to have it generated automatically because it gives us a nice strong password. We'll just go ahead and delete this. It'll give us a confirmation. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, please. Thank you. Because again, we're going to be starting from scratch. Because now that this is deleted, if we come back here, refresh this, it ain't going to work. Like I said, we're going to wipe the slate and we're going to start from scratch. So we go on back here and let's go ahead and create our database. You see, no databases. Let's create one. Now, what we're going to put in here is the WRPD1 because the prefix to that is the username. I'll show you that here in just a sec. because if you recall this is our username right here it's just that it will automatically it being cPanel automatically appends that with this right here which is the username of our cPanel so if your username is something other obviously it's gonna be something other than this it's basically part of what you use to log into your cPanel it's what you use to log into your FTP client for example and then it's got the underscore and then the username or the database name is what they're looking for. So again, that's what we're, this is the name. That's what they're looking for whenever they ask for it right here. And then we're going to create DB. And you see it automatically appends it right there. So we're good to go. Go on back. Now we've got the name created. We've got the actual database created. Now then, we need to create a user. Guess what we're going to create the user. If you said WRPD, move to the head of the class. Now we're going to generate the password. And I always do the regenerate. Again, that's that paranoid thing in front of me. And then, in this case, you got to be careful because I use all these funky characters in there. And that period or that dot at the very beginning, that is part of the password. So make sure you get that. And, not, and no spaces before or after. That is your password. So now I'm going to come on back here to our data sheet. I'm going to overwrite this one here because that's no good anymore and paste that puppy right there. Don't forget the dot is part of it. Close that out. One down here, create user. And again, if I wasn't doing all this yammering, and again, it gives you the info right here, but if I wasn't doing all this yammering, the database would be created in moments. I mean, it's really that quick and easy. Now we've got the two pieces of the puzzle created. We've got the database created, we've got the username created. Now we've got to tie the two together. So let's look at this as a three-step process. Create database, create username, tie them together. Now the tying them together part is a little bit different depending upon the version of cPanel that you have. And the latest version, I think this is 11 something, uh, this is how you do it. In version 10, you don't have an extra page to go to, but it's pretty much the same. It's not too difficult to, to figure out. But you just go here to add. You see here we've got the current users. Actually, there should only be one here. Because we deleted the database earlier, I failed to delete one of the users. So we're going to see now if I just totally screwed everything up. Okay, so we got the one user, and we got the one database, and let's tie the two together, shall we? Okay, user, yep, database, yep, and if there are more than that, then you can assign them accordingly here. Now we just want to add, brings us to another page, what privileges you want to give this guy? We're going to give him all the privileges, because that's us. Make changes, boom, we're good to go. And that, folks, is how you create a database. Remember, it's a three-step process. Create the database, create the user, tie the two together. We are good to go now. And that's it. And, of course, in the process, you want to make sure that you record, in our case, on our little data sheet here, record the username, record the, uh, the database name, record the username, and, of course, record the password. Now then, with these in our possession, we are, in the next video, going to go ahead and start our manual install of our WordPress blog. And it's really not difficult at all, just a couple of extra steps. But again, I think it's integral knowledge to have just in case you have the need to 
do any fixing or tweaking of your installation, your auto installation, it'll just it's just good knowledge to have. So even those of you that have the auto install taken care of, you should really come back and check out the next video anyway, just for the sake of having knowledge. Knowledge is power. Thanks again for watching this video on how to create your MySQL database. You have a great day now.